Hi, Rick here again, again working from home with everything that's going on, but I wanted to shoot another quick training video on throw bags. Best thing about training with throw bags is you don't have to train in a pool or a creek or a river. You can practice things on dry land. So, lots of things to keep in mind about throw bagging. First off, the best weapon in your arsenal, if it's used correctly, keeps you out of the water. First thing, throw bags more often than not are placed with your downstream safeties. One of my mantras in Swift Water Rescue is we do a lot of pre-planning up until the point we get in the water. This is especially important when placing your downstream safeties. So when you pre-plan, the best time to go out and look at places that are potentially cause you problems is when it's actually flooding. Figure out what that water looks like versus if you're like me and you're in Central Texas, most of the creeks stay dry year-round until they actually flood, which makes them difficult to pre-plan. So, you want to place your downstream safeties in a position where they've got room to move up and down the bank. You don't want crowded with a lot of trees and everything else to where they can't make a decent throw. Second, if at all possible, place them in a position where the water either slows down or the current actually pulls the victims more towards the shore that you're going to be standing on versus the opposite shore. This shortens the length of your throw, or if the current slows down, it gives you more time to line up a really good throw. Third, if at all possible, you want to be able to make your first throw as your victim is still upstream. This gives you the advantage of hopefully your victim is at least looking in your general direction. And if they can't hear you give them a voice command, they can at least see a hand signal from you. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, so throw bags. They come in all shapes and sizes. The biggest thing I'm going to recommend about a throw bag is you want a throw bag that's extremely easy to repack. So what I mean by this is, as you'll notice, this NRS bag is fully packed. And that's how much room there is at the top. So what that means is, is you're repacking this bag. You're not having to stop, stuff down, stop, stuff down. It just stuffs in there and boom, you're ready to go. Because what you don't want to have to do is a recoil. Recoil, that's for another video on another day. But we'll get to that. Uh, another thing is, so when you place your downstream safeties, we always talk about place a minimum of two people downstream. The question is, how many throw bags do they take with them? My personal preference is, as many as they can possibly carry. That way, if you miss, you just drop, pick up another throw bag, and make another throw. Second thing is, night operations. Send an odd-numbered person down there. Their job is to hold a really bright flashlight. Your helmet lights are not gonna get that far out into the water. Bright light will, that way you've got a spotter, you can line up your shot. Okay, so, three ways to throw a throw bag based on terrain that you're gonna encounter at the water's edge. The first and most common way to throw a throw bag is going to be the underhanded technique. This keeps all the overhead obstructions you might run across, trees, power lines, other things like that, hopefully out of play. Now, the important part is when you do make the underhand throw, you don't wanna grip it by this handle here because if you overthrow, that causes that to flip up, it's gonna go straight up. Always grip the throw bag by the just the neck of the bag. And remember, it's a nice, easy toss. If you get over zealous with your throw, if you will, put too much behind behind it, it's gonna go up instead of where you want it to go. So acquire your target, come up, and when you're aligned with your target, just a nice, gentle, easy toss. This is to avoid the overhead obstructions. The next way to throw a throw bag, let's say you've got a little bit of just you know, weeds, brush, nothing major, but you don't want to have to throw through it doing an underhand toss. You can do basically an overhand. Now everybody's like, well, what about all that stuff that's suddenly going to catch a rope? Hey, look, we're looking to grab the victim and get something to maintain tension. If I'm holding it and then it goes around a tree and they still come into the shore, life is good. We're okay with that. Okay, third method to throw a throw bag is you got stuff down here, got stuff up there and we're looking at a sidearm throw again nice easy toss the beauty of this is you can practice all of these throws on dry lands in your department at any time and I recommend doing it without even deploying the rope just toss the bags back and forth just play a nice game of catch when you do deploy the rope in a parking lot or anywhere like that instead of pulling the bag back to you 
coil up the rope and then recoil the bag because dragging the bag back to you on a parking lot or something like that is going to eventually rip the bag or crack the buckles. You don't want to do that with a training thing. Okay, so another question that always comes up when I teach these classes is, is it best to throw the rope in front of or behind the victim in moving water? People say in front, people say behind, and I say, why would you deliberately miss? Okay. And people argue with me, well, they don't argue with me, they debate with me. Of, well, if it's downstream, they can see it and they can swim to it. If it's upstream, it'll drift into them. And my response to that is, is you're answering this about what you, a trained rescuer, would do but not a person that's not been in that environment before. So let's not deliberately miss. The other thing is, when we throw a throw bag to a victim, keep in mind, we don't want the bag to necessarily hit our victim. We want that rope to fly over them and land across their shoulders. One of the main reasons we want to make that first throw upstream so we can communicate with that patient is, I tell them, hold your arms out. And that gives me a lot bigger target to lay that rope across as opposed to not having their arms out. Okay, now, tricky part. For the pendulum effect to work, and what I mean by this is you've thrown your rope successfully to your victim. They have a hold of it. You're starting to tension it. You want to create a pendulum effect to where you don't have to pull that victim in. They just slide right into the shore nice and easy on the same side of the water you're on. Here's the kicker, and don't ask me, I graduated from Texas A&M University, physics was not my strong suit, but here's how this works. For the pendulum effect to work, the victim has to hold the rope over the opposite shoulder of the bank that you're standing on. So, a couple of things. First off, know what side of the bank you're standing on. If I'm on river left, the victim needs to have it over the right shoulder. If I'm river right, the victim needs to have it over the left shoulder. You do not want to try to call out to your victim, put the rope over the opposite shoulder of the bank I'm standing on. You're going to get very, very confused looks or insulting hand gestures or a combination thereof. So, right shoulder if I'm on river left, left shoulder if I'm on river right. Second thing is, we talk about this a lot in my class. This is one of my main mantras. Swiftwater rescue is a game of inches. First and foremost, I don't care how many feet of rope you have in your throw bag, you are not getting that much out of your throw bag. So don't waste rope. All you need for you on the shore is just a very, very small amount of rope to create what we call a butt belay, which is basically, oh, dropped it. And yes, I intend to pull that weed right after this video is shot. But this is your butt belay. That's all you need. Everything else needs to go towards the victim if at all possible. This way you can maintain tension. Second thing is, when you butt belay, this is you, this is the rope, and this is the water. That way if something goes wrong, you let go. If it's up here on this side, you could potentially get pulled in, which does you or the victim no good whatsoever. Okay, I think I have covered everything, but one thing, if I do forget it, I'm new to YouTube, so there will be a follow-on video titled, Things Rick Forgot. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. I know things are crazy. If you have any questions, you can email me at r.cummins, that's C-U-M-M-I-N-S, at Fathom Academy, one word, dot com. And if you want to schedule a class or anything else, same thing, just shoot me an email. We're looking forward to it. We're opening the doors again for service May 1st.